This is an immortal 80s classic. It launched so many careers. It cemented Arnold Schwarzenegger as a leading man, and it made over a thousand percent profit on its budget. What awesomeness is that? However, because I am a nitpicking YouTuber, doesn't stop me finding faults in this film. So, I'm Berryman, and this is 10 Things Wrong With. The Terminator is a 1984 American science fiction action horror thriller film directed by James Cameron. The film tells the story of a Terminator, a cyborg assassin, sent back in time from 2029 to 1984 to kill Sarah Connor, whose unborn son will one day save mankind from extinction. When the film was released to very low expectations, it spent two weeks at top of the box office charts. However, its reviews were mixed, if I'm being perfectly honest, with some saying that it was brilliant and Schwarzenegger was perfectly cast, where some was just saying it's just guns, guns, guns with no exposition whatsoever. However, that being said, it has gone on to become a cult classic, maybe even higher than that. But what have I found wrong with the film? Well, here are 10 things wrong with The Terminator. Number 10, tonight. So the film starts with an on-screen text sort of just filling in the background information of this film. Now, some people don't like that, but this one was okay, except for one part of it. So it says that the final fight of this futuristic war will take place in our present tonight. And that's where the flaw is, because this film took place over a few days. Now, if it happens in one night, I wouldn't have picked it up. But yeah, it does take place over a few days. So the tonight bit sort of is a little bit redundant, really. Number nine, date. This film is set in 1984, the year the film was released. When Carl Reese appears, he apprehends a cop asking for the date. And he says it's the 12th of May, Thursday, which it wasn't. In 1984, the 12th of May was a Saturday. However, I'm also going to stick up for this film. In 1983, the 12th of May was a Thursday, which is probably about when they wrote the script or filmed that part of it. So yes, it would have made sense. Now, I'm well aware this is nothing new, but it's still a glaring flaw, especially to somebody who likes accuracy as much as I do. Number eight, bad shots. So these Terminators, they are ruthless killing machines with awfully bad aim. Seriously, these guys make Stormtroopers look brilliantly. You would think a machine would be able to pinpoint with auto aim straight away, but no, they take quite a few shots and miss quite a few times. Now I'm not on about just the Terminator himself, even the clips showing the future with the Terminators, the Terminator has have running someone running towards them and shooting either side but missing the target it's like these terminators were set with their ai modes to easy <sighs> these machines how do they do so well in this war when they can't actually shoot properly number seven 911 so sarah connor's gone into a club called tech noir to try and hide from the person that's stalking her and killing all the other Sarah Connors. She goes to the payphone and puts money in the payphone to dial 911. Now, before anyone says, are you sure that you, uh, she actually dialed 911? Well, I've actually zoomed in on that part on the Berry Telly so you can actually see, look, 911, quite easily. And yet she put the money in the machine. Now, why? Isn't 911 calls free in America? I mean, over here we have 999. If you go to any payphone, even in the 80s, because I know I was there, and type in 999, you'll get straight through. You don't need money. So why do you need money to ring 911? It makes no sense at all. Number six, self-defense. I'm going to pick on the Terminators again here. But this time, the Terminator seems more occupied with his own self-defense than actually fulfilling his target. Let's face it, 
in Tech Noir. He has actually got his gun out, his gun cocked, ready to fire, aimed right at Sarah Connor's neck. Now, he gets shot. Okay, he does stumble a little bit, but does he try and retake his target and take the shot? No, he stops to defend himself. Why? He does this quite a few times where he stops. He's got Sarah Connor bang to rights and he stops trying to go for her to protect himself. The technology in 1984 cannot really touch you. It took a lot to kill this Terminator and yet you're more interested in defending yourself than fulfilling your target. Once again, your programming is pretty flawed. Number five, hiding. Yeah, I'm on about the Terminator once again. You know, this unstoppable, unhurting, unfeeling, killing machine ran and hid. What part of this film did the Terminator run and hide? Well, it was the uh, part where he crashed. He disappeared. Why? Both cars were in a car crash. He could have got out of the car, taken out Carl Reese, taken out Sarah Connor. He would have won his mission. But no, he went and hid. Why? I mean, yes, he was a bit damaged, but he didn't care about that. He could have just gone and done, mission done, over and done with. It doesn't, <laughs> to me, it doesn't make sense. This Terminator uh, comes across as he doesn't really want to do what he's programmed to do. Number four, face surgery. Okay, I'll probably get shot if I didn't bring this one up, but the scene with the face surgery, that was bad. Even for 1984, it was awful. It looked so bad, it looked fake as hell. And do you know what makes it even worse? is later on in the film, when Arnie set, turns around and steals the uh, truck, turns around to the other guy in the truck, looks at the guy, says, get out. You can see all his effects on his face, and that looks impressive. And because that looks impressive, it makes the face surgery bit so much more worse. <sighs> Why? What, what, what were they thinking? I mean, I know this was a low budget film and if all the effects were like it, I probably wouldn't have said as much, but the fact that that one, especially in a special effects heavy film where the special effects are amazing, that one scene ruins everything. Number three, police paperwork. So you know that scene where Arnie says his immortal line, I'll be back. There's another thing that really sticks out in the sore thumb with me, is the fact that that death sergeant is filling out his paperwork. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that part. It's the fact that he's using a pencil with official police paperwork. Huh? What's the stop someone just going rubbing it out and rewriting it? I'm pretty sure even in the 80s, police, actually I know police were actually writing in pens, and I'm not gonna say how I know that in the 80s, but, Using pencils is not a smart idea. Use a pen. I'm pretty sure that you were. Number two, slow truck. Once again, the Terminator, I'm picking on you, not really wanting to kill your target. So you've stolen a truck, you're charging down a road, and Sarah Connor and Carl Reese are on foot. It's a, that's a no-brainer, splat, job done. Except she's running as fast as that truck, which isn't physically possible. So the only logical explanation is you're driving that truck way too slow, way too slow. Put your foot to the, put the foot on the gas a little bit there and speed up and you would have won your mission. Granted, you probably still would have blown up because the dynamite in the back, but still, you weren't really trying to kill Sarah Connor really, were you? Number one, Burning Man. Now, out of everything I've said on this list, this one confused the hell out of me. So the tanker has exploded. The Terminator gets out of the cab. He's burning alive. He makes a few steps. He stumbles to the ground, rolls over, and you've got some impressive special effects again where the Terminator is being burnt alive. You can actually see the whole skeleton being burnt, the flames are going through the neck muscle and back out the mouth. It is awesome. 
except about a couple of minutes later when he stands up, he's standing up from underneath rubble. Where did that rubble come from? Because nothing fell on him. They rolled over and you could see him and it was like, it was a second Terminator there the whole time. That was a big, big editing flaw on that one. Final thoughts. So what do I think of this 80s classic? Well, once again, I am being ultra nitpicky. There's not actually that much wrong in this film, especially for a low budget film that certain scenes were filmed illegally. There's lots of documentation on that bit. But what they have done with that extremely low budget is a masterpiece. It's very well acted. It's a good story. And in fact, that the exposition is done in such a light way, but you understood and followed. I love that. It's not exposition heavy. It's a good story. It's a good thriller story. And yes, by the exception of that one scene, the special effects are amazing. The musical score is spot on. The action is brilliantly. And yes, Arnold Schwarzenegger as an emotional, killing cyborg was perfect especially as he wasn't so keen on it when he signed on but still he pulled it off and now it's his most famous role ever you can't really say much wrong with this film as i said if i look at this film as a whole there's only that one majorly thing wrong with it which ruins the whole film and that's that face surgery the effects on that just ruin the whole thing other than that, yes, I enjoyed this film. It's a brilliant film to sit down and watch and enjoy. So what am I going to rank it? Even though it is an 80s classic, I can't give it the 10 out of 10 because yes, that one really bad special effects scene does put a dampener on the whole film. But I'm not gonna be overly harsh. I am gonna give this a nine out of 10 berries. That's my opinion anyway. What's your opinion? Let me know in the comments below. On to next week. So what are we doing next week? Well, I am going to do the James Bond films. Now, I know I've already covered Casino Royale. Which one am I going to cover? Well, take a guess in the comments, but find out next week. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.